Alrighty then, tonight is fried oyster night, so I'm going to do that in my Presto Pro Fry, and some people have asked for a small review or a tutorial on it, so here it is. So what I do is, because this is a gas stove or propane, um, and I want this on my stove where I can use the vent hood to take any smells or um, whatever goes through your vent hood. So I put it on a cookie sheet just for grins. This is how I store it. Of course, I'm doing this with one hand. I don't really use the lid, and I got the two baskets, which I really like. So hang on one second, I'll get the baskets in. So the basket handles just fold in, so all I have to do is pull them up and lock them in. Excuse my racket. So the handles lock in. You can see, they're very secure. You can then put the lid on. Uh, I haven't had a need to do the lid because um, I don't get a lot of splatter. Uh, I use peanut oil for frying, but this will fit right over there with those on it. I do keep this sitting on my island um, just because I'm a fire freaker. And in the event I had a fire, I can put this on top of it in an effort to smother the fire. But I've never had so much as an issue with this. So let's see if I can do it with one hand. And I still have a messed up shoulder. And I'm right handed. This slides in dead easy. And on the back of it, it has clips that it slides down. I did that with one hand so could not be easier. So now I'll add my peanut oil and let me see if I can get a flashlight. I've got a flashlight and if you can see there on the side there is a minimum and a maximum line for your oil so they could not make it easier. It's not hard to see, it's only hard to see on camera with the reflection from my vent hood light contraption. So I'm going to use one gallon of this peanut oil. Uh, I have used this peanut oil and what I do because I save the oil for seafood because that's what we fry, uh, oyster, shrimp, fish, is I'll put a piece of cheesecloth through here I let the oil get cool that's in here. I don't like to just let the oil sit in this because it doesn't have a firm top to it. So I strain it into a pitcher through cheesecloth. I then pour that back into here. So that's how I do it. So I'm going to put this into the fryer now. So that one gallon got me closer to maximum, about in between minimum and maximum. You're never going to get a full gallon back after you use it, but this will be ample for us for frying oysters and french fries. So now I'll put the baskets in. And one major tip to remember that I failed to remember one time was before I put oyster, shrimp, fish, anything in these baskets, I want to dip them into this oil so that they get hot. Ah, my battery's faded, so I don't know what's recorded and what didn't. Anywho, what I do is, before you put food into these baskets, and you can get one large one, is once the oil is to temperature, which is very easy to do with this dial, is before I put food into them, I drop it into the oil to get it hot, then I will put, say, my fried shrimp or oysters or fish pieces in. Then they don't stick. The first time I did it, I had two shrimp get stuck because I was dumb. So, anywho, it's not hard. And one of my favorite parts of this, it has a magnetic plug-in. So it's very easy to plug this into the back. I do have to use an extension cord from here to my plug-in, but that's because I choose to use it at my stove. 
It is only a two prong. I just use an appliance cord. You can use any extension cord. You just, of course, don't want to stretch it across the floor. I mean, if this were Europe, nobody has to tell you that, but in America we have to say, please be careful with an extension cord so that you don't trip on it, okay? So, don't walk on the countertops. You shouldn't have an issue. So, all I got to do, well, if I'd raise it up to where you could see better, when I turn this on, let me try turning down my light. Ow, arm. Okay. Can you see the red light that came on? Try again. Right there, if I can get my finger to work. So I'm going to turn it all the way around to 375 and get my oil hot. It ain't hard, people. It's a little Presto Pro Fryer for less than $60. I mean, you can't beat that with a stick, people. Alright, so here's my oyster dipping business. Flour all-purpose flour, not self-rising. We ain't making a puffy pastry, people. Okay, and I've got like cumin, cayenne pepper, white pepper, stuff in there. Um, you can always use Tony Shashere. You can use Emerald Seafood Magic. Just something to pimp up your flour a little bit. Then I've got three eggs, a splash of milk, and about five drops of Tabasco because that's how I roll and that's where I'm from. And then some breadcrumbs. These are just my own dehydrated, plain breadcrumbs, not flavored, because I got enough going on right here. So, I'm going to get to dipping. Make a big mess. Oh, and just so I don't forget what the heck I'm doing, when I go to fry something, I make a note. Hmm. <laughs> Number one, dip it in the flour. Number two, put it in some egg and some milk. Number three, put it in the crumbs. Idiot proof, you see. I like that. Keep it simple. It ain't hard. If you don't make it hard, make it easy. Now, generally when I do this, I have my friend Carol here, who is a battering station machine. So I'm going to have to mull through it by myself, but she's really good at this. So I've taken, these are local Charleston oysters from Seafood House, shucked for us, poured right into this little container. I rinse it out with water several times, just holding my hand over the side and draining it. Um, and you may occasionally find a little bit of, um, I'm going to call it shell, but it's more like gristle, so you can kind of feel your way through it. So now I'm going to batter them and put them on a plate. Still ain't hard. Let's see if this will work. I still have a drunk tripod. Super clean hands, people. Clean them. Clean them good. So I'm going to lay me one in here. That's so yummy. And this here is a monster. It's very difficult to keep a dry and a wet hand with these because they're slippery little suckers. But we love it. So my oil's heating up and it's like a fried. Do you want it fried? Do you want it fried? Or do you want it fried night? Because we're also having french fries from a package. Oh yeah. Not big processed people or fryers, but these are oysters, man. There can be exceptions for things. Smush it in my little breadcrumbs. Okay. And I'm just going to set it over on a plate, not laying on, lying on top of each other. Lay, lie, y'all figure that out. I was not an English major. And I'm Southern, so we say our own things. So I think I'm going to end up using my other little package too. And then we're going to go buy a few, put in an order for them, and put them in a freezer. I love oyster. And then if you make an oyster, poor boy, okay, life is like seven times as right. Okay, so I'll continue with this not exciting action, and we shall return. So here's my fried oyster setup. I got them on a plate. I'm going to dip my baskets down. I got a little spider. I have to dip it in the hot oil, too. Then I've wrapped a plate in aluminum numb foil, or aluminium, as they say in Britain, aluminium, you got to get it right, and some paper towels. When that fills up, the hubster is going to set this one on top with whatever oysters we have left. So I'm waiting for the man to come in and hold the camera, because I have a drunk countertop tripod, 
that I cannot afford to have bite the big one on the floor while I'm frying something. So I'm waiting on the man. You're waiting on the man. We're just waiting. And I got French. Record. So our oil is hot. Our red light went off. It just came back on. And I have to remember, like I said earlier, to drop these into the hot oil before I stick my oysters in there. Okay. And I'm also going to dip my little spider in here so nothing sticks to it. But that oil is at 375. Notice the light went off again. Fern, do you think I've left that sitting in there enough? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to pull out one basket. And this is just the way I do it. It's just kind of knuckle dragging. I'm a knuckle dragging kind of chick. You can put 900 in there if you want to. And I have the um, fan on so it's a little noisy. But I'm not burning my house down. Fit a little in here. All you do is set them down. We really like this little Presto. I like the security and not worrying about a whole bunch of splatter. And remember, on the island I have the cover to this. And because of the magnetic strip in the back, if I needed to unplug this, I can grab that. I can take it out of the wall and I can cover this. So they're floating, not sticking to the bottom. So I'll show you what they look like when they come out. Okay, so to turn it off, all I got to do is twist this little knob. Uh, and I dip my baskets in there just in case there's anything on them. There isn't. And I'm going to unplug it by the little magnet thing because it's dead easy to pull out. So it's unplugged. I have no worries about it. You get a little bit of splash, but not a lot and not like I have gotten with other fryers. So the way I clean these baskets and the handle is I put them in the top rack of my dishwasher also with the little spidey thing. So this comes completely out and is dead easy to clean. This I simply run hot water over it. I don't want to submerge that in water. But you can see it has easy to use handles. In case of fire I'm not using those but it's easy to move it back and forth. So for something less than $60, you could fry yourself silly, turn the fan off, and you can fry safely. I am petrified of frying. I prefer to do it outside on my little Camp Chef Explorer because I'm scared of fire as any reasonable person would be. So the Presto Pro Fry, can't beat it for the price, and it really is a great little gadget. You could then, if you want, do french fries in it. We're doing it inside of our oven. So, it ain't hard. Get you one and get to frying. It ain't healthy, but it's fixing to make us happy. And I bet this will be very healing to my stiff shoulder. So, I also think this is quite medicinal. I like tartar sauce. Made some. He likes cocktail sauce. Made some. These two little porkers are fixing to munch. So, it ain't hard, but it's going to be good. Have a great one. Cocktail sauce for him, tartar for me, a little bit of ketchup on the side, and some french fries. This is a plate of happy, perhaps shoulder healing. Anything could happen here. Yummy. And on the oysters, once we drop them in, it took only two minutes once they hit the oil and they were ready to come out of the fryer.